Welcome traders to another tick mill earnings report preview with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's reports as always we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer uh, the material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views and information and opinions expressed by me in the recording today are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Electronic Arts, who announced after the New York close today. Um, we are looking for an earnings per share consensus print of $1.45 on revenue of $1.77 billion. In general, analysts expect the company to potentially post revenue in line with expectations. While the company should benefit from its recent acquisitions, lower user engagement levels could impact its overall performance during the quarter. Companies should primarily benefit from its live services offering for uh, the FIFA and Apex Legends franchises. Electronic Arts also made several acquisitions over the past few quarters, including Playdemic and Glue. And that should help to fuel overall top line growth. That said, with economies opening up, people are moving out of their homes uh, and looking for more public forms of entertainment. And this trend has resulted in a drop in user engagement levels for gaming companies. The company managed to improve its gross margin on the back of a solid digital mix in its sales for the previous quarter, and that trend is expected to continue in the near term. Investors should also know Electronics Arts' uh, current valuation metrics, including its forward PE ratio of 16.23, its industry sports and average forward PE ratio of 16.23. So, one might conclude that Electronics Arts is trading at no noticeable deviation compared to industry standards. Uh, let's take a look at what we can expect statistically around the earnings releases. Um, EA shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings 6 out of 12 previous reports. However, on average, the stock has actually moved down 0.4% uh, in the first day of trading after company earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, EA is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.3%. On average, EA stock has moved higher one week after earnings, but the average gain is actually flat over time. Let's take a look at the options market and what uh, volatility is being priced for the earnings release. Options traders are pricing a 10.8% move on earnings, where the stock has averaged an 8.3% move in recent quarters. From a flow and sentiment perspective, uh, there was notable buying on May 3rd. 692 contracts at the $130 call expiring Friday, June 17th. Options order flow sentiment in general has actually been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings has only 22% expecting an earnings beat. EA share price has drifted down 11.3% post earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcement is 3.8% and the current drift represents a negative 1% standard deviation move. Let's move into the charts and see where we might be able to identify some near term trading opportunities in EA. So from a technical perspective, some key levels to, uh, to pay attention to here. We have this weekly ascending trend line, which is currently coming in around the 105.60 level. We also have this daily descending trend channel, which um, currently, if we popped lower on the earnings, would give us 107. What I'd be looking for is any uh, rejection then back into the prior monthly projected range support at the 113 area. I'd look for that test of the 106, 105 area, and I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. Initial upside objective will be back into that uh, 117, 118 level, with the potential for us to extend then up into trend channel resistance, bringing, uh, bringing that 130 call level into play. However, if, uh, if we don't get, if we don't find support at the 105.50, any move through 103.50 would be a technical breakdown, and I would then looking to be short the stock, looking for the downside objective 94.99 en route to that high volume node of 93.20. So really going to be pivotal to see how we respond at the trend line. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.